Understanding? Yes? Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. 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 Good, it's showing your thinking. Because the the dunya is in so many forms. Yeah. And the dunya doesn't just mean gold and sheep. That is representing the dunya. What is the dunya? Shaykh Andy said one time in one sohbat, anything that pulls you away from Allah, that is your dunya. May Allah keep us and make us to understand, to take lesson from that. Let us not to become like Ibn Salama. You know the story of Ibn Salama? You know the story of Ibn Salama? Mm. Let me tell you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ibn Salama, he was a Sahabi a companion of the Prophet ﷺ. He was one of those that did not own anything, did not belong really to any group, any clan, anyone. He was just living in the masjid. Those ones, in reality, who are they? Hmm? Ahli Sufa. Some people, original Sufi, they're saying. Because they have no ties to the dunya at all. And all they do is to be in the masjid, take care of the masjid, and to remember Allah. Those were the ones who were sitting down. And the Prophet came to them and says, what are you doing? And they said, we are sitting here and we are thanking Allah. Just sitting and thanking Allah for bringing you, Ya Rasulullah, sending you to us. And Prophet ﷺ is saying, are you sincere? Is that really what you're saying, what you're doing? He says, yes, Ya Rasulullah. We're just thanking Allah for sending you. And the Prophet gave him a very special blessing then. This is an open hadith that gives permission for any maulid, for any salawat, for any gathering that people will have to sit and to thank Allah for bringing the Holy Prophet, sending the Holy Prophet to us. These were the ones, the Ahli Sufa, Hazrat Abu Darda, Hazrat Abu Huraira, so many of them. And there's a special place in the um, uh, Masjid al Nabawi also that the Ahli Sufa they used to sit. Of course, these Wahhabis, Shaitan, they hate anything that has to do with any place or anything that has tabaruk, that has holiness. So they're trying to cover everything. In reality, in that masjid, it's filled with different incidents, different situations. And for 1300 years, they always make sure, they say, over here is a different blessing because the Holy Sufa sat here. This other place outside of the masjid is a different blessing because it is the well that the Prophet ﷺ, he spat into. Different, different places. So when you're there, you're blessed by the presence of the Prophet ﷺ. Who was there? Your faith grows stronger. So Ibn Salama was one of them. But Ibn Salama, his heart was not in there. A heart is important. You can be there physically 10 years, 20 years, but if your heart is not there, it doesn't mean anything. So one day he went to the Prophet ﷺ and says, Ya Rasulullah, please pray for me that I will get wealth, I will become rich. Then I can help other Muslims. 
So many Muslims thinking this way, right? But majority, they end up just helping themselves. Prophet looked at him and said, Ya Ibn Salama, don't you want to be poor like your Prophet? Yes, Ya Rasulullah, but do you know how it is with people? Prophet did not say anything. That is clear. When the Prophet doesn't say anything, it means what? <laughs> Just as if the Prophet ﷺ turns his face, that means he's not looking at it. You don't insist. But Ibn Salama, he insisted. Another time came and he says, Ya Rasulullah, please pray for me. The Prophet just kept quiet, he just walked away. Third time he asked because he's pushing for it. Then the Prophet ﷺ opened his hands and prayed for him. Now, for people of no intelligence or intelligence guided by the ego and shaitan, they're going to say, well, Prophet prayed. He's given permission. Don't you see? He prayed. There's blessings in it. But people of understanding that the Quran keeps repeating, for people who understand, the people know that the Prophet was pushed and forced to make that against to his will. Because this is all about the will, isn't it? Evil happens in this world. Who allows anything to happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's not a leaf or a twig that falls down to the earth without Allah's permission given to that. Why Allah is allowing evil to happen? And some foolish ones are saying because Allah allows it, He wants it to happen. Allah allowing something to happen is different. Allah's will and pleasure in something that is happening, it is completely different. Don't mix up the two. Allah allows shaitan to misguide mankind. Correct or no? Can anyone say Allah is happy with that? Can anyone say that Allah's pleasure is that shaitan is misguiding us? Then why Allah is sending 124,000 prophets and countless awliya Allah to guide us away from shaitan? So understanding the will of Allah is different. Understanding his permission is different. So Prophet ﷺ opened his hands. And once a prophet asks, Immediately it is sent. Before long, Ibn Salama, who had nothing, and the Ahli Sufa, they used to have only one piece of cloth. Sometimes they would share it with each other because it's not covering it properly. We are very, very far away from that. We uh, cannot carry that. We cannot imitate that. Whatever that comes into our hands now, we have to give. And we know in this way, more that we are giving, more it is coming. Then when more it comes, it becomes a burden. Believe me, I understand that. You keep giving and more is coming. It's a burden now because you feel the fire. It is the rights of others. It stops being your, your thing. It is not yours anymore. If you don't give, you get very uncomfortable. If you don't share, you get very uncomfortable. So before long, somebody gave Ibn Salama a sheep. He's taking care of it. Pretty soon, that sheep gave birth to twins. And those twins gave birth to twins. And before long, it just increased and increased. Ibn Salama, who was there in that masjid of the Prophet serving, imagine now the honor of serving in the masjid of the Holy Prophet, he said to us, Salam. He started to go out of the masjid to take care. His intention, saying by tongue to the Prophet, is to help other people. So he started to go out a little bit more often. He started to disappear a little bit more. He's not staying in that masjid, in that dargah anymore. And one day, the Prophet said, 
Where is Ibn Salama? Yeah, the Sahabis, they just put their heads down. They say, it is known to you, Ya Rasulullah. Because from being there every day, now he used to come there just once a day. He's busy. From once a day, he starts coming once a week. From once a week, he starts coming once a month because his flock is growing and growing and growing. So one day when that ayat came, the Prophet is saying, that ayat came and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the order for zakat to be made. And the Prophet sent two sahabis and says, go and collect the zakat. Zakat from people, it is an order, it is a pillar of our faith to share. Not just to share, to understand it is not from you. Yeah, to keep the wealth circulating. It is very uh, it's forbidden and it is very bad in our faith if someone who has a lot of uh, uh, possessions and money and is just sitting on it, hoarding it, collecting it and sitting and is not moving. It is very bad individually, it is very bad for the community, it is very bad for the whole world. So these two Sahabis, they went to collect the zakat. When they came to Ibn Salama, Ibn Salama has hundreds of sheep now. Salam alaikum, alaikum salam. Said, we are here by the order of the Messenger of Allah to collect the zakat. But what do you own? Ibn Salama looked at them, thought for a while. Then he says, there is another person living over there. Uh, give me some time. Why don't you go over there first, collect that one zakat, and then come back to me? The Sahabis look at each other. They didn't say anything. They said, eh, Allah. They went to that other Sahabi. That other Sahabi owned more than Ibn Salama, but he was given permission to do that. And when the two Sahabis came and said, this is the order, to put it simply, out of every 40 that you have, one part, it has to be given, we have to take it, and this is the rights of the orphans, this is the rights of the widows, this is the rights of all the poor people that we have to give. The Sahabi says, zakat? He says, yes, take everything. Everything that I have, not one 40, take all 40, he's saying. The Sahabis, they said, no, order is one in every 40. Then take the very best, he said. He says, no, we cannot. We have to be strict and we have to be fair. So they took, on their way back, they came to Ibn Salama. Ibn Salama looked at them and they said, we have come here for the zakat. Every 40 that you have one, it has to come back. It is the property of the Muslim Ummah. Ibn Salama looked at them and said, what? Muhammad is asking for bribes now? What does that mean? That means now that he always had the disease in his heart. And the Prophet ﷺ understood that disease. And it's stopping him from leaving the masjid to go out. Because once you go out with that disease, that disease is going to come out, it's going to overtake you. How can someone who is living, eating, sleeping, praying behind the, behind the Prophet ﷺ daily, understand because the masjid is there, like, and then the Prophet ﷺ was living and sleeping in the next room. How can someone who is doing that year after year, next to Habibullah, next to the one who could shatter the moon into half, next to the one who was able to be in Qaba Kawsain, how can that one still have that evil inside of him? How can that one be like that? Because if man is not opening his heart to release that evil, it will always be there. 
the ego, it is the most dangerous thing. You can be next to the prophets, you can be from his wives, you can be from his nephew, like it is with Hazrat Musa. The lineage is not going to save you. If that evil of the ego you have not taken out and you have not controlled it. You can hide it. But if you don't control it, if you don't take it out and understand what it is, if you hide it, it's not going to save you. Your lineage is not going to save you. You serving is not going to save you. Because you're just playing games. Because that evil is still there. And it's just looking for an opportunity for that to be free, then that one will be feel, feeling so free. You think Ibn Salama did not think that the masjid was heavy? If it wasn't heavy, why would he leave? If he understood the reality of that masjid, why would he leave? Correct? If he's able to open his heart and understand the rahmat that is following, why would anyone leave? Those of us who have gone to the Hajj or the Umrah, you enter to the Masjid al number. we don't want to leave, correct? And you're just there for one day, two days. Imagine someone in the original Masjid serving the Prophet ﷺ, he says, I want to leave. Ibn Salama was not aware of himself. If he was aware of himself, he was just playing games. And he was just keeping it. He wasn't opening, he wasn't trying, which means that he's saying this thing is not evil, it's just my point of view. It is just my idea. It is just my opinion. It's not bad. Why you have to get rid of it? So it stays there like a cancer. So he said that the Sahabis were shocked. They didn't say anything. They say, well, they left. When they were returning, the Prophet ﷺ saw the messengers that he sent to collect the zakat from a long way. He saw them coming. He looked at them. He shook his head. He says, ah, ah, ah. Ya Ibn Salama. You have lost. You have lost. And you have lost. Three times he said it. Very heavy when the Prophet is saying that three times. You have lost that title of a Sahabi. You have lost this dunya. You have lost this Ahirat. When the Prophet said to those messengers, when the messengers said, it is known to you, these are his words. The Prophet said, did Ibn Salma ever help any one of you? Who did he help? They all looked down. The Prophet left him like that. After the Prophet ﷺ passed, Ibn Salama woke up a little bit and he sent his zakat to Abu Bakr Siddiq. Abu Bakr Siddiq refused it. After Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq passed from this world, when Hazrat Umar was the Khalifa, Ibn Salama was feeling more tight now. He sent a zakat even more to Hazrat Umar. You know how Hazrat Umar is. He sent a message back with all his wealth that he gave for the zakat, saying, You did not give zakat in the time of the Prophet. And Abu Bakr refused your zakat. Why do you think I'm going to take it? If you send it one more time, your neck is going to lose your head. There 
or the justice of Hazrat Umar. Now, Ibn Salama, he could have been the most richest person, meaning what his heart is desiring, he got it. Some people is not sheep. Some people it's influence. Some people to be a sheikh. Some people to have people praising them. Whatever that your heart is pulling, even if you have everything. But you don't have that love of the Prophet والسلام, or those who inherit. It doesn't mean anything. We would lost dunya and ahirat. That is a lesson for us. Never think, never think that you are better than Ibn Salama. Never think that you are better than Ibn Salama. We cannot even come close to him. Because if he just saw the Prophet ﷺ once with his own eyes and he kissed his hand one time, his station is much higher than anyone else living in this world right now. But from that highest position he fell. Because he's not understanding the cancer in his heart. He's not letting the doctors to treat it. He's seeing that cancer, not as a cancer, but as a friend. And he cannot wait for the time when he's going to be free. And when that happens, you see, he becomes now the one that is in reality working against the Prophet ﷺ. He's not giving his zakat. It's a pillar of Islam, isn't it? It's like someone who says, I'm not going to pray. That is working against the haq. That is a lesson for us. We cannot think we are better than that. He has done so much, we have done nothing. We need to check ourselves not to be like that. That here we are in the dargah. Like I said, this becomes paradise when you have paradise in your heart and you make this place into a paradise. If your heart is filled with the dunya, this place is going to be Jahannam. Inshallah, may Allah keep us in safety to take lesson from that and for us to become better, Inshallah, Rahman. May Allah forgive us, forgive our weakness. May we hold on to the jibba of our shaykh strong, inshallah, and never let go. Wa min Allahu tawfiq al-fatiha. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This much is enough. Astaghfirullah. Ya Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Fatiha.